Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today we are going to be talking about one of my all-time favorite tropes and that is sports romance. I love sports romance which is so weird to me. I found it so strange when I first started reading romances how much I loved sports romances because I'm not the biggest sports person in real life. I have zero athletic ability, like zero. Um, <laughs> but um, so I never played any sports, but I always kind of wanted to. I just suck at it. I am too tall and awkward. Like my center, I grew too fast and my center of gravity like never came back. So I am like one of the clumsiest people in the world. So me playing sports would be dangerous both to me and to everyone else who was on my team. But <laughs> that aside, my dad is a huge sports person and so are my old so is my older brother so i grew up around a lot of sports my brother played baseball since he was four years old and he played it through when he was in college um and so my dad was always watching sports and the only sport that i actually watch on tv are hockey i love hockey and uh baseball because you need to be a baseball fan in my family or else you're like not welcome um <laughs> Anyway, that was me rambling for a while, but I'm going to be recommending some of my favorite sports romances to you. I can't remember it. I'm sure I have done this video before. If I can find it, I think it was a very long time ago, but if I can find it, I will link it in the description below. If not, then that's okay. But I have quite a few to recommend to you, and they are all different kinds of sports, so it'll be really fun. So we're just going to get into the books, and I hope that you enjoy. So the first one that I am going to recommend to you is my most recent obsession, and that is Blindside by Candy Steiner. This one is a football romance. The hero named Clay is on the football team, and he has a romance with the PR assistant whose name is Gianna. Um, and so Clay's girlfriend of multiple years recently broke up with him and he is not happy about it and Gianna has a huge crush on this guy who is like a musician on campus and Clay notices that Gianna has this huge crush on him and so he approaches Gianna with this idea and says hey if we fake date your crush will notice you more because you're with me and I'm super popular and my ex-girlfriend will be jealous so we can fake date and we can both get what we want and Gianna's like okay good plan and so they decide to fake date but while they're fake dating Clay realizes and learns that Gianna is inexperienced to say the least in being in a relationship and is a virgin so she um has no idea what to do with with seducing a guy or having sex with them and so Gianna asks him if he would help her out and basically uh it becomes a sex lessons trope seduction lessons trope and he helps her out one of the best things about this though is that Gianna is a huge romance reader and she actually reads dark romance um which I loved and Clay being the pristine man that he is decides to take Gianna's books and go to the read them and like study the places that she tabbed in it that she was really into so that he could find out what she liked like men take notes because that is the best way to do that clay is a amazing hero and I absolutely adored this romance so so freaking much it was so so good the next one that I'm going to mention is Waking Olivia by Elizabeth O'Rourke. This one is a cross-country or um, track romance, uh, sports romance. So Olivia is a runner um, and I, she runs track and she had a big scholarship to a D1 school and she ends up losing her scholarship because of a fight that she gets into and she is sent now she goes to this D3 school and they are like really counting on her they're like wow we have this great amazing runner in our school now we're gonna like win all the tournaments and everything but Olivia has some trauma from her past and actually has a condition where she sleep runs, like sleep walks, but sleep sprints. And so she's always exhausted when she gets to practice. And her coach is like, what the fuck are you doing? I told you not to run between practices. And she can't tell him. She's like, I had to. Um, and so 
her coach actually catches her running once and she like has no shoes on and is in her pajamas um and he's like what the fuck is going on and she has to tell him I have this condition where I sleep rub. And so her coach ends up helping her, taking her like under his wing to try and help her out with her um, problem. And she has ends up having a romance with her coach, whose name I believe is Will. Um, and it is an, a small age gap, not like a big age gap, but it's taboo or forbidden because he is her coach. So it was so good. It has multiple trigger warnings though because, G uh, because Olivia had a very traumatic past so please check those because I can't remember all of them off the top of my head but she definitely has a very traumatic past her she has issues with her uh, father and her family from when she was younger so please be on guard with that before if you re decide to read this book then the next one that I have is five rounds by Nikki Castle this is an MMA fighter romance this is also an enemies to lovers that's done really well so this one the heroine in this book I believe her name is Riley is it maybe I'm wrong with that I don't know um she is a uh she ends up getting not evicted but told that she has to leave her apartment building her like lease ends and he or her tenant her um landlord doesn't want to renew her her lease and so she has to move and she finds this really nice apartment that she wants to move into but she has like a week where she would be homeless like she she's like from the time that she has to move out of her old apartment to the time that she has to move into her new apartment is like there's like a couple there's like five days or something where she doesn't have a house and so her best she asks her best friend if he, she can stay with him and her best friend is like actually that works out perfectly because I'm actually gonna be on a business trip then you can stay in my my room and I'll be gone and so she's like thank you so much but that means that she's living with her best friend's roommate who she hates um, and he is an MMA fighter and they actually train at the same gym the heroine is not an MMA fighter but she trains in MMA and is like super badass about it and I really love it because she talks so much about how she like goes to the gym and trains not to like look a certain way but to feel a certain way which I really appreciated because there is a lot of scenes of her going to the gym and working out but it's done in a way where it's like she's not working out to like make her body better she's working out to to feel strong and feel powerful and feel more confident because she is strong and powerful um which i really really appreciated because i was worried when they started like going to the gym a bunch that she was going to be like talking about how like the shape of her body or like what her body looked like and that was not it at all she and the hero do not get along at all but now are living together and end up in a fit of passion one night kissing um and things progress from there and it is very very good it really well done i really really enjoyed it i think i gave it four and a half stars it was so good then the next one that i have is um everything for you by chloe lease this one is a mm soccer romance they are on the same team the hero um who is the bergman sibling because this is part of the bergman brothers series or Bo bergman sibling series is i believe oliver so oliver is a newer player on this soccer team um and there is a veteran player on the team his name i believe is gavin and he doesn't really like Oliver, but he doesn't like Oliver because Oliver is a reminder of everything that he doesn't have anymore. Gavin is at like the end of his soccer career. He has really bad chronic pain because of all of the torture that he's put his body through over the years of him being a so soccer player. And he is basically on his last legs as a soccer player. And Oliver Bergman comes in as this new rising star player who has everything that Gavin still wants back and is trying to hold on to but they end up becoming co-captains of the team and end up having to spend a bunch of time together they're also neighbors um and it is so cute I really really loved it um it has great chronic pain representation which I can actually speak to because I have chronic pain um and uh anxiety representation Oliver has anxiety and I also have anxiety so I can speak actually to that representation so I really appreciated both of those representations um 
There is also a scene that I very much connected to because in the book Oliver is like severely lactose intolerant and yet eats some cheese and literally like is on the couch and like dying on the couch from how much pain is he's in um and he's supposed to be babysitting his niece and he ends up having to call Gavin to like help him out because he literally cannot move from the couch and I related so much because I'm dairy free so I was like I understand you um so that was just like a side thing that I loved about the book but it was so cute the romance was really cute it is a age gap um and I loved the way that they had to open up to each other because they were both like very much hiding things and like holding back but it was so cute and I really really loved it. Then I have another MM and this is a hockey romance, MM hockey romance and that is Irresponsible Puck Boy by Eden Finley and Saxon James. This book is a friends to lovers romance about two hockey players who are on the same team and they, one of them is gay and the other one um has always said that he's straight. And the one that is gay has a huge, huge crush on his straight best friend. And his straight best friend has been in a relationship with this girl for a very long time, but he is sort of commitment phobic. But he's been in a relationship with this girl and the girl wants them to move forward with their relationship wants to get engaged and therefore mar and then married and he's like not sure that he can even stand up at the altar and agree to marry someone because he had his parents marriage fell apart and he has struggled with believing in marriage and he's like what's the point and so he decides to come up with this fantastic idea where he's like hey best friend we should get fake married so that I can see if I can actually even stand in an altar without like freaking out. And so they decide, they decide to go into like some 24 hour chapel and stand up and perform what would be a wedding ceremony. And then against their knowledge, the wedding venue, wedding chapel, files paperwork for them to be married. And so they end up being married and having to pretend that the marriage is real because the PR scandal of their marriage being fake would be awful. And so it is hilarious and also so, so sad in certain ways because the hero who's in love with his best friend is now married to him and having to spend all this time together with him and he's like, doesn't want to hurt him but also is like trying to like not spend as much time together with him because he's like it hurts him to be around his best friend because of how much he loves him and can't be with him so it was so good I absolutely loved it it five stars it is one of my favorites Eden Finley and Zach and James books now um and the friends to lovers aspect is a fantastic <laughs> Then the next one that I have is Wrecked by Lauren Asher. This one is a Formula One racing romance. The hero in this is a Formula One race car driver and his name is Jax. And Jax has some issues. He is uh, very, he's become sort of dependent on alcohol to sort of numb him from his issues that he um, has in his personal life basically addicted to anything that like numbs what he's feeling and so he's a huge adrenaline junkie and he likes to go with alcohol and pills and stuff like that to try and like numb himself. He has a PR scandal um, and he, the team, his uh, racing team, hires a PR manager who doubles as like a sober coach um, whose name is Elena to watch over him and make sure that he sticks with his PR regiment and that he's staying away from pills and alcohol. And Jax and Elena end up having to spend a lot of time together and Elena ends up learning more about Jax and what he is going through and understanding more why he is the way he is and why he has done what he has done. And it was very, very good. There is a aspect of this that deals with um, illness. So 
just check some trigger warnings because I'm sure that that might will show up somewhere. Um, it is very, very good. And it also has anxiety representation that was done incredibly well, but I really, really enjoyed it. So I would recommend. Then the last one that I am going to recommend is actually another Chloe Lee's book. And that is Always Only You by Chloe Lee. This is book two in the Bergman sibling series. You can entirely read the Bergman series out of order. I read them out of order um but this one follows Frankie and Ren so Ren is a hockey player and Frankie works for the team and this is actually a grumpy sunshine romance where the heroine is the grump which I love um it has also um the heroine also is autistic and has a uh, rheumatoid arthritis so there is that um chronic illness representation in there also that I've been told has been done very well um I don't personally have arthritis um but as somebody who has chronic pain I also related to the struggles that uh Frankie dealt with in this book but Ren is like such a sweetheart and like such a I love him as a hero. He is so fucking cute. He's just like the most cinnamon roll hero ever um he's also a virgin so it is a virgin hero romance and he like has been pining for frankie for a while now and so it's like a hero falls first romance too it's just like the cutest hero ever he's also a pacifist and a hockey player which i always find very very funny and like like it shouldn't fit because he doesn't get into fights and he like refuses to fight anyone even though he's like a giant which i love he's just doesn't want to hurt anyone and he's so cute um but this also so in this book frankie's apartment gets broken into and Ren offers to have her stay with him and so they end up staying together and it was just so cute and Ren is like my dream man so that is the last one that I was going to recommend um so that thank you so much for watching please let me know down in the comments below if you have any other sports romance recommendations that I need to check out but that's gonna be it for this video so please like it if you liked it and subscribe and stick around so you can see more content from me but other than that I hope you all have a wonderful day bye